your mention of your pastor and of your parents gives an opportunity to segue into another section of questioning. Everybody has people in life who influence them. Who are some of the people? Talk about your parents first. Mm -hmm. what, what did they do for you? Mm -hmm. Not just food, clothing, shelter. Mm -hmm. What did they do for you? I, I begin with my father, who uh, worked for over 38 years at the Campbell Soup Company in Chicago, uh, on the west side of Chicago, some distance from our, uh, our, our home in, in the neighborhood on the very far south side of Chicago. Well, everyone knows about the kind of segregation, hyper-segregation in Chicago. And uh, there was a kind of daily courage and uh, audacity on his part, I thought, as he uh, walked through largely white neighborhoods to get to the bus uh, in Chicago that would uh, transport him to work. Uh, very early in the morning, you know, 4 a.m., Dad was up. And, and there was a kind of work ethic that he modeled. Um, um, he, he, he worked hard, and he'd come home and, uh, you know, read the Wall Street Journal. And it was a working class uh, guy, but he was, he was paying attention to the stock market. And so it really broadened our sense of participation in the larger uh, society. Uh, you know, Dad uh, went to college, uh, junior college in Chicago at night. And I still remember, I cringe today when I think about the streets of Chicago. Um, there were three of us young boys uh, at that point, uh, three his sons. We, he'd sort of leave us in the car while he went in for his hour-long class in, in business organization and, and come back. And, of course, everybody did that then. It was, it was safe. And so uh, anyhow, his, his uh, pursuit of education at night, working hard during the day, I mean, I think I contrast that with so many um, uh, urban poor families today that never see anyone sort of get up and go to work in the morning. And we had that example. Uh, he didn't talk much about race relations in Chicago or in America. Uh, he'd often reflect on his own experience in the family of being sharecroppers in the South and sort of being disenfranchised and cheated and, and why they made the move to Chicago. Uh, he was also, although he attended church, not very active in church and often uh, didn't attend because he was uh, either exhausted from work or went in on Sundays for some uh, special project. My mother, on the other hand, really was the sort of mediator in terms of uh, racism in Chicago and America and would uh, talk about it, would warn. You know, there were four boys before the two girls came in my family. And it's interesting now I reflect on the way in which she and my grandmother sort of socialized us to be survivors on the mean streets of, of Chicago, both in terms of neighborhoods we shouldn't enter uh, and uh, interracial settings in which there's a certain etiquette and behavior we should display, uh, not to call attention to ourselves, uh, to be polite and, and, and well-mannered in, in, in dealing with police uh, officers and so on. It was all just very practical wisdom mm -hmm. about how to sort of negotiate touchy situations. And then, um, of course, during this uh, period, uh, the experience of Emmett Till uh, was very much in the air. We attended the church on the south side of Chicago that... Um, uh, it actually wasn't the very same congregation. They were sort of brother-sister congregations almost, just a few blocks away. And um, our pastor and the pastor of uh, Emmett Till's church were, were colleagues and best friends. And so that tragedy sort of struck home and, and, and prompted us as young men to listen very carefully when mom and grandma talked about uh, you know, kind of how you present yourself in public and what to do and what not to do, et cetera. Uh, but uh, they were sort of pillars of the local church, uh, in a church that didn't ordain women. These were women without title, but with significant portfolio. And they ran all sorts of youth programs, and they organized recreational activities. They, they encouraged uh, mentoring and after-school um, tutorials and so on. So they kept us very busy. And... Um, tried in some ways, I think, to insulate us from the, uh, from the racism in Chicago um, and, and, and in, in the larger nation.